My name is Chris Palazzo. I'm with Nola Ghost Money Tours, and I'm also the founder of Paranormal Society in New Orleans. I've investigated everything from the smallest trailer in Louisiana to one of the most historical sites in the country. Okay, right here is Kevin Betzer. He's from the show, uh, sci-fi show, Keep Sounds Paranormal, and he also is the founder of uh, Down South Paranormal, Paranormal Research. What we're going to do is an equipment introduction to show you about the different equipment that we have. Okay, this is the K2. All right, have you ever seen this before? Okay, well, what's, this, what's this measure? You know what's that? DMF, electromagnetic field. So the theory is that spirits produce or manipulate electromagnetic field. So when we're doing baseline readings or readings like that, we get a spike, we try and establish communication. So if we say we're doing spirits here, please light this meter up and it'll shoot up. So we try and establish communication, intelligent communication with that. Can speak louder? All right, so we'll try to establish communication with that. There's other different types of EMF, and we won't get too deep into that. All right, <clears throat> right here we have a digital recorder. Okay, remember we used to use this in college or whatever, you know, people use it lawyers and stuff like that. Exactly. You know the difference, uh, difference between EVP and disembodied voices? Uh, you know, I know that there are uh, different levels. I think you can't hear them. Exactly. So EVP stands for electronic voice phenomenon. All right, and so we're all sitting in a room, and none of us can hear the voice at all. But when we play it back, we hear it very clearly. You know, they have different classes. They have A class, you know, C class, depending on how well we hear it through the visual report. Now, a disembodied voice is a voice where we're all sitting in a room, and we all hear the word, like, hey. And it's none of us and somebody else. It's a, it's a disembodied, it's not a body. So that's what we hear. So, and the obelisk. This is an obelisk string, okay? So what this device does is it's a word generator, okay? It produces okay. random words. Uh, sometimes it's relevant, sometimes it's not. The area is that it measures the EMF and other static electricity in the air, and it produces words for that in the middle of the world. Is that like 500 word? Yes, it does. And it also, has, yeah. it also has a thermal flashlight. So what it can do, it can measure cold spots. So oh, whenever, so you know how when spirits walk into a room or they yes. come out, it gets cold. Yeah. So actually, there is, we've actually had spirits be able to manipulate that to like turn the lights and different colors. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. So this has different modes, but we don't get into it too much about that. Uh, so now we're going to talk about one of my favorite pieces of equipment. Uh, it's called a rim pod. Now what this does, it puts out its own EMF. Okay, it measures static electricity. If anything breaks the perimeter, it goes up. The more powerful the closer to the antenna, it shoots up. Okay. That's what that does. With the Melmeter? Melmeter. So what the Melmeter does, yeah. all right. Are you with the Melmeter? Yeah, it was named after Melanie, but the yeah. yeah. and her father invented it. Yep, yep. her yes. father, because he kept hearing her name because around the house. He kept hearing her name. Yeah. He kept hearing her around the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. this is a cool one right here. This, this is a special one that Gary made. I mean, he's made a bunch of them. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. what this does, this measures electromagnetic field digitally. Okay, so instead of using the lights to, to, to communicate the measuring event, this is more accurate. So it measures it, but also uh, it has a thermometer on it. So when we feel those cold spots, we can know if it gets colder in the room, it'll shoot down. But this one is also a rim pod that we just talked about, and a bell built into one. So then it goes like that. Dude, that's my hat! So, <laughs> so this is a to move it over, sir. So that, this is a pretty Teddy cool bear liked it. Has anyone, have you ever walked into a room and felt the hairs on the back of your neck stand up? Absolutely. We usually had static electricity. You got a, anybody got a cellophane on? I know there's some smokers in the house. I know we got some. Look, it's back right there. All right, great. So what this does is it measures static electricity. You know how you rub your feet on the carpet and walk up to it? Like that? Like that. What's cool is when you know this goes off, and we were actually on an investigation this past weekend, you know, the other day, and the spirit was able to light half of it up on the man. So it's really cool, really cool intelligent piece of equipment if you can get it to go off. Uh, it's a spare box. It's a spare box, okay? This is also, it wasn't invented by Gary, but this, this particular one was designed by him, okay? The spare box started around 1980, 1980 mm -hmm. by a guy named Frank. It was start with Craig's box. And it wasn't even used for spirit communication. It was used for what, Dave? 
UFO research. There you go. But he never did manage to communicate with them. He actually came out later and said the whole thing was a scam anyway. So. But he started experimenting with it as a paranormal community. He found out that it does communicate with the parents. We've had a lot of uh, progress with it. What this does, it's a radio. And what it does is scans through uh, stations in milliseconds. So you can, we can adjust it. You can get 25 stations in one second. So what's going through those stations really fast, scanning, bam, bam, bam. And if there he is, using the white noise, the voices, uh, and the static that they can manipulate and talk to us. So this thing really works very well. Uh, what else we got? We got the EM pump. Let me hear the EM pump. EM pump. So what this is, this is the EM pump. What this does, just like your Wi-Fi, it puts out EMF. Okay? The there he is, that's where we use that to manipulate to talk to us. But we'll throw this in the room and we'll let it run for about 20, 30 minutes and take it out. Uh, tonight we're going to be uh, experimenting with a negative ion. Is it a pump? Negative ion. If you want to turn the camera and explain a little bit. Well, the negative ion generator is a technique I've been using for about six, seven years. Uh, we uh, use it. What happens is that the negative ion generator charges the particles in the air. Uh, dust particles, air, all air particles. And what happens is when an electromagnetic field enters the area, those charged particles adhere to that EMF, uh, therefore making it actually visible under IR conditions. So uh, if you want to see an example of that, go to our website at www.deltaparanormalproject.com. Uh, we got not one, but two entities on video, and 30 minutes worth of rock footage. Yeah. So, that's going to be an amazing piece of thing we're going to be experimenting with that tonight. So, uh, but you guys won't get to see that because you just want to be quick, right? <laughs> <laughs> Victor knows what I'm talking about. All right. So, this is another piece of equipment that is very controversial and that we experiment with a lot. We've had a lot of positive results. Right, Paula? Mm -hmm. All right. I'll say, I just want to see Paula saying app works. That's all. <laughs> you can look into the camera and say this now. Well, well app is a in theory. Thing. App and software. And that's true. Yeah. That's true. Like, I love them, right? I gotta love them. Okay. Yeah. Sitting there on my lot like, like. Okay. So what this is, this is a software program, okay? And it's called the Echo Box. And what this does, it's a, a random uh, sound generator. It pushes out, pushes out broken uh, syllables and different types of sounds along with our echo and the theory is the spirits can manipulate that to speak to us. This is probably one of the best pieces of equipment that we have. We, we use course. that quite often in all our investigations. We yeah. get pretty good evidence for it. Not uh, great evidence. Yeah. In theory, it's the same as the Oculus or the uh, uh, box. Spirit box. No, no, no. In theory, it would be the same as the Oculus in phonetic mode. Right. Phonetic mode is the mode that just pushes out sounds and the spirits can really go south. But I think it's a, it's a lot different. I think if this gets out public and the creator of this, uh, Danny, uh, sees me compared to the Oculus and fly down here and kick my butt. So. <laughs> I think it's better than the Oculus. All right, uh, so what is your outtake on the Ghost app? Basically, the EMF detector on, you know, uh, you go to Play Store on your uh, mobile app. What's what your outtake on it? I don't believe it. How about Mr. Ghost? I, I mean, I don't know. I've experimented with that one. You know, but I have, years ago, pulled up the, the ghost radar and just... It's That's what it is, yeah. And, and, and ghost it radar. does not work. It's for entertainment purposes only. Yeah. You know, and it's just not real. You know, That's but can you doing. have some fun with it? Yes. You know, you can have a lot of fun with it. Hey, Chris. Kevin. What do y'all think about orbs? <laughs> uh, I'm, well, orbs to me, it's just... 99% of them, I either think it's dust, bugs, because of water vapor. Elements of nature. Yes, I mean, there's so many other things that it could be other than paranormal. Because of the fact that orbs are so controversial and so many of them can be misconstrued as everything that Kevin just stated, that you really have to have backup proof that an orb is there. Now, if you well, see a piece, if you see... Well, I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just no. saying there there's a lot of other proof. things other than yeah. it, has, it actually being. There has to be more compelling evidence that that works. Oh, okay. right. Like uh, let's say, let's say if I'm holding, if I'm holding this K2 meter, and all of a sudden 
when you see a ball of energy go into the K2 meter, well then we just watch the orb, and the K2 meter flashes, well then we just went to the orb. Or if I'm on camera right here, and let's say David is in this room, Mary's room right there, and I see a ball of energy go into his back, and next thing you know, he's holding his back. That might be compelling, but when you're looking at all the orbs, all the dust and everything, you really, you know, it gets very confusing. Okay, last from the past, what's your take on rods? Rods? Like the, uh... I've never used a rod. No, no, no. The rods are the long cylindrical shape yeah. caught in some pictures. Yes. Oh. What? That's real old. Really old. Yeah. That's like I don't know. Well, you know, like a lot of photographs here. Teddy. Oh, we forgot to uh, introduce our Teddy. Teddy. Alright, you can Teddy. Alright, this is Teddy. Uh, basically what we use Teddy oh, for is trigger objects. As far as like children or something like that. Teddy. And let me show you what he does. He's actually a motion sensor. And when he's on, his eyes will light up and they'll glow and it'll let us know that's something. I'm going to pass it. Let me show you. Let's see if it goes on. And you do that. And then we'll turn on like that. He's also an EMF detector as well. As you can see it light up here. Light up right there. And right here is the eye of the EMF. This is Kevin. Got the red eyes. <laughs> Go to trigger out there. It's more like if we have children's spirits. We lure them in and use it's called triggers, like fishing. So, uh, I never worked. <laughs> well, that's what we have. That's our equipment introduction. And so we're about to be starting investigating. Ready? Yes. All right. So, uh, I mean, Noah ghost tours? Ghost stories? Oh, you want a ghost story? No. Well, no. Well, basically, Noah, you know, pumped up, you know, Promote y'all stuff. Oh, he already knows. Victor already knows who we are. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, you want to tell a ghost story? Might as well do I, it. I haven't talked about one. You know, they didn't make it on the show. I mean, are we doing a story? What are we doing? I don't know. I mean, I can talk about Springfield. Okay. All right, you know what I can talk about? I can talk about home. When uh, I was sitting at a table like this, okay? And, um, uh, the dining room and the living room were connected in one big room. So it was about 30, 40 feet, one big room. And we had a motion light set up behind me at the end of the room. So I'm sitting like this, and I have my investigator across from me, and I have my camera guy right here, and I have two clients right here. This is a private residence that we're doing, all right? And uh, we're actually running the after box, and we're not getting much, so we decided to take a break, turn the camera off. The motion light, the blue motion light goes off behind me. I turn this way and look, there is a full figure shadow standing, swaying back and forth. Okay? And um, so I, I, I told them that I wasn't the only one that saw it. My investigator saw it, the client saw it. So I said it could be matrixing or something like that. I kind of close your eyes, shake off, and look back. But we look back and it's more dark. <laughs> so I said it. So standing to the right of it was a door, or a doggy door, and it had a moonlight coming in, all right? So I said, if that's a shadow swaying right there, if you're an entity, can you please black out the doggy door? And I remember Ryan saying, that's, that's not going to happen. And all of a sudden, the shadow starts to move to the right and block out the light from the door. And then everybody's like gasping, and I'm like, well, hold on. How and why I'm keeping my composure, I have no idea. This is amazing stuff. So. I said, well, if, you're, if, you're, if, you, if you can do that, you can walk towards me and come see me. Come see me. So all of a sudden, we hear it. And the shadow starts to come closer. And the shadow overcomes me and overcomes the rest of the table. It felt like somebody took a wet electric blanket and put it on their wrap and around it. And I really don't recall the next five minutes. The next thing I recall, I recall putting my head down and feeling this. Kind of glad that that just happened, kind of happy, but also kind of scared, but not too scared. More like a comforting scare. I don't know, it's kind of weird to describe. And then I remember being outside talking to my legal investigator after that. I don't remember getting up and walking outside 
and talking to John. I don't remember. All I remember is look, coming to and looking at John and talking to him. It was really cool. Really cool. I remember when uh, me and Randy went to Lafayette Cemetery. I don't know if y'all been there. Lafayette Cemetery number one. We were actually, um, we were actually uh, at Lafayette Cemetery. And we came across an empty grave. It was broken off. There was nothing in there. So we decided to actually crawl inside the tomb. So we get up in there, we go all the way in there, we start setting up equipment and stuff. And uh, we start asking questions and doing an EVP. And we ask the question, you know, we're, we're inside of your grave, you want us to leave? Tell us to leave. Yeah. So we're sitting in there, we're waiting to hear something, you know, we, we never hear, we didn't hear anything. And uh, so I actually got out, I started walking around that graveyard, and I left Randy up in there. And uh, you know, I'm walking around and I actually saw like a, like a shadow person, like a dark, dark black. It's like the darkest black I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And uh like, and, and, and the first thing I'm thinking, I was like, well wait a minute, I just love Randy, it can't be Randy. Right. So uh, I start coming to my senses and I'm like, no, it's not Randy. Let me go, let me go a little closer and see if I can find out what it is. So I started looking around and I didn't see it. So I go back to Randy and I was like, well, I, I saw something, you know, did you get anything while you went in? He's like, no, I didn't feel feeling. So it wasn't until the next day we started reviewing our, our evidence on our, our digital report. And as we were asking the question, uh, if you want us to leave, tell us to leave, we had like a class A EVP say, leave now. Oh, wow. So that was really, really cool. All right, so last question. Uh, Gemini, is it haunted or not? Is it what? Is it haunted or not? You gotta find that out for yourself. Oh, yeah, say, it's, it's pretty accurate. Actually, okay. actually, oh, actually, yes. hold on. Say that again. Yeah, it's haunted. It's, it's very accurate. Say the Gemini is really haunted. The Gemini, the Gemini is, is really very haunted. active and it's very haunted. Cut.